Hey, this is Stanford Peabody, and I have uh, with me today Veda Ayeli Nick Simpson, CEO for Quitty Incorporated. Right. Right? And so we're going to be talking about her business, and she's going to be telling us about uh, what she's been doing, the constraints she's been having, establishing a business as a woman in Liberia, and who she sells to. And uh, what she sells and what she's doing, especially um, she's involved in agriculture. So thank you for talking to me, Vera. And uh, you can go ahead. Okay. Well, um, I just really appreciate the opportunity. I want to thank you for taking the time to interview me. Um, a little shy, but I'll, I'll try to, to forge forge ahead. Uh, what are you incorporated? Is a woman-owned small business. Uh, we are the only business in Liberia growing and processing cashews. So we process cashews, we call our cashews put in cashews mm -hmm. for retail mm -hmm. here in Liberia. We're here at Peace Cafe, one of the locations where you can find put in cashews. And uh, we've also um, transitioned into uh, ginger beer, all natural, organic. A beer and made ginger beer. A lot of the ginger beer you taste out there has sugar in it. Uh, the ginger beer, ginger anana, ginger beer is all natural. So the sweetness that you taste is beer and made honey. Okay, good. Liberian grown honey. So it's ginger, honey, pineapple. So those are the two products right now. Uh, I was inspired to, to start the business really by my mother, Ayale, Dr. Ayale Ajibon Cops, who uh, decided to plant cashew trees in the middle of Bung County a few years back. Uh, and I still hadn't moved back home. I've been living overseas for a number of years. Uh, and I moved back to Liberia in 2015. Um, worked for a number of organizations, the NGOs in particular, working with women and, and empowering women politically. Uh, but I've always had the need to, to look toward doing business. And my mother's passion for growing cashew, she didn't really have a business idea she was just growing the cashews and I said to her well what's going to happen once you start harvesting and she was like well we'll cross that bridge when we get to it so um I okay, guess so what's what's been some of the obstacles or constraints the constraints You're right doing I mean, sure I mean yeah in well I mean um it's difficult in like in agriculture because Especially in 2015, 2016, I think the focus was not so much on agriculture. Even now, uh, in terms of assistance, whether you're talking about government assistance or international assistance, technical assistance, uh, you really have to go out and get the information you need, get the, the technical know-how where you can find it. And I've been able to find it regionally. We joined the African Cashew Alliance because, ironically, all our neighbors, all around Liberia, cashews, being from Sierra Leone, the Guineans. I mean, do you have a market here for cash? Well, yes, there's definitely a market. The issue and the challenge is being able to process um, in what I refer to a credible way. And right. what that means is that to make money, to make serious money in cashews, you have to scale. Right. You, you have to do it big. Big, you yeah. Know, what is it? Go big or go home? Right. Um, and so right now, the biggest challenge is, of course, securing the kind of funding you need. Mm -hmm. To process in that way, um, a lot of my processing is, is manual. Right. Okay, so I went on the internet. I went to different locations uh, in Ivory Coast, into Gambia, to find out what they were doing. And so I just taught the women who work for me how to do the processing. Everything is manual. But you right know, now. like uh, some of the people who will be watching this, um, people in Gambia, Sierra Leone, Ivory Coast, wherever. Um, they are the ones who, where you went to get this technical know-how, what is uh, equipment and processing, right? Okay. So that's where you got all this information for to be able to Absolutely. do it better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, back in the day, a lot of the cashews in the world came from Asia, mm -hmm. from India. Mm -hmm. uh, now, many of the African countries are number two, number three, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, right. Kenya. These are top, top cashew producing countries in the world and now the cashew production is moving towards West Africa mm -hmm. because the largest consumers of cashews are the Europeans and the Americans. Are you, are, are you planting like local cashews or you have uh, improved 
cashew nuts are you planting? Because I don't know the local cashews, I don't know the time frame for their maturity and their harvest. So the cycle, the, the production cycle for, for cashews, harvesting is January, May to May or June. Mm -hmm. So January to June, that's harvesting. Wherever you plant, wherever, that's just the cycle. I mean, how long cashews. does it take for the cashew to grow and then come to harvest? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. Three and a half Is that years. for the local ones too, or that's just for oh, anyone? For oh. the local, uh, that's just that's just what it is. Three and a half years. When you plant, because mm -hmm. it's a tree crop, of right, course. Right, right, right. So it's a cashew orchard. Right. So right. we have a small cashew orchard, very small by by regional standards. We have about 700 trees mm -hmm. in Zanzibar, Bun County, mm -hmm. and so it's really small. But I'm using it as an incubator of sorts okay. to learn exactly what it takes, and then to move forward and get this, the funding I need to build a factory. Now, somebody who's watching may want to know, like, if you have about 700 trees and you harvest, what kind of uh, production are you talking about? Well, it's, it's not significant. You're talking about maybe two to three tons a year, which is minuscule. Okay. You have production, you have operation. Okay. So, um, ready? Okay. Um, I'd, I'd like to switch a little bit to what I'm looking to procure, the right. kinds of things that I need to, to, to get to sort of move us to the next right. level. Mm -hmm. um, the fact of the matter is, in terms of generating income, not just because you want women to have right, gainful exactly. employment, because right. a lot of the people who work for me are women. Right. The people who harvest, the people who do my ginger beer, mostly women working for me. But what I realized in terms of cashews to really move to the next level, you need to get into production. Right. Okay. Um, and my dream is to eventually produce and export processed mm -hmm. cashews from right, my beer. Right, right. You know, the market is there. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of making sure you procure the right kind of equipment. And I've always toyed with the idea of should I do it in incremental steps? Because I know in the region, mm -hmm. there are companies that provide equipment for, for smaller manufacturers. They have the cashew nut crackers and the, and the boilers, those little steam boilers and those kinds of things. I've look, looked into that. Mm -hmm. um, but you really want to look bigger than that. As I said right. before, to make real money in the business, you need to scale. And so the large size equipment where you're doing a couple tons an hour in terms right. of processing, right. Right. Those, those equipment typically come from uh, India or they come from Singapore or Vietnam. The Vietnamese are huge into cash. Okay. Are, are you looking uh, into aggregation? I mean, like, are there people around you who have cashews that you can buy from them? And so process. I've been looking. Mm -hmm. I've been I've been looking to do that, and um, it's you say that it's so ironic because um, I mean my my handle is like beer and grown goodness. Right. So you want to make sure you you, you exhaust all avenues in terms of securing cashews within my beer. Right. But I know that there are other African countries that are going. Like for example, the Ghanaians are going to Ivory Coast and getting cashews and exporting it through there because there's excess. So there are some countries, Cote d'Ivoire, Sierra Leone, I believe, that have excess where we could actually source cashews and then process them here if yeah. they don't have enough processing plants. Right. So that's another opportunity that I've been looking at. I would love to connect with a Sierra Leonean cashew farmer or an Ivarian cashew farmer that's looking to, to find a dedicated source. Um, one of the challenges in the market right now is that the price for raw cashew nuts has dropped. Mm. When we got into, when we, our first harvest was 2016. Mm -hmm. The first time we harvested 2015, 2016. The price for a ton of cashews was a thousand dollars, right? You get a thousand dollars. Right now it's dropped to about three, four hundred dollars. Wow. So, you know, for people who are doing it, going into it on a large scale, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of cashew farmers got a big hit or they just decided that they weren't going to sell because the price wasn't right, trying to get trying to get that price back up again. But I say all of that to say that you talk about aggregation right. and working together. I think that regionally with ECOWAS and all of that mm -hmm. in place, we could work. Right. You know, like I mean, not only machines, but yeah. maybe also cashews. And, um, I, I mean, are there any other um, byproducts, for instance, like cashew oil? Oh my goodness! 
right? I'm so glad you brought that mm -hmm. up. So, besides the nut that people eat mm -hmm. as you know one of the the, the most popular right. snack foods because mm -hmm. it's so nutritious, um, and the oil that you get from the nuts mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. there is a cashew shell mm -hmm. nut oil mm -hmm. that is used in the manufacturing process. Okay. And um, one of the biggest uses is to, to, to use it in the manufacturing of brake pads. A lot of the sophisticated mm. vehicles, Mercedes, you know, all of that, want the natural cashew nut oil. But that's a different kind of machine to get that, though. It is a different kind of machine, but it's the same product. Same idea, it's, right? the same, it's the same cashew nut. Right. So right. the shells that you break and you take the nut out, those shells are very valuable because just like it's better to have na natural rubber mm -hmm. as opposed to synthetic rubber. Right. It's better to have natural cashew nut oil than synthetic in the manufacturing process. They also use it in um, cobbling where you put on oh, to, to, cure, uh, to, to cure plants. To protect, yes, to protect wood from, from insects. That is also manufactured with cashew nut. So have you thought about that as another stream or that's Absolutely. a little bit far off? Yeah. It's far off, but right. it's, I mean, when I, as, as soon as I read about it, I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't understand why there's such a high demand. Everybody keeps thinking that, oh my goodness, these people are just, they can't get enough of the cashews right. or nut. And, and it's right. true. Mm -hmm. But the other reason why you have Asian middle, middle men and women coming to Africa, West Africa, is because even if you have small nuts, mm -hmm. they're still valuable. Right. Because even if you're not using the nut to eat, mm -hmm. the cashew nut oil, the oil, you know, you can, and then of course there's cashew butter, mm -hmm. there's cashew milk, just like you have almond milk, right. there's cashew milk. And those are all different levels of processing. Different levels of processing, different opportunities. Right now, in the European countries, in America, everybody's going vegan. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's going right, vegan. Right. And almonds and cashews are the vegan steak and chicken and fish. Right. 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 And and dairy, because if you're vegan, you can't do dairy either. Right. So the vegan cheese is cashew almond. Uh -huh. Okay? The vegan butter is cashew almonds. Same thing with the milk that vegans drink, cashew nut milk you know so i mean the, the wonderful opportunities so it that's part of the reason why um it's it's booming i just hope that we can go back to getting the prices on the market um up okay. the but you know like you you said it's about it used to be like a thousand for a ton it's gone down but you're not selling by ton ton you're no, selling no, you know, just like packaging, packaging right yes, packaging. but you, so you still you know doing it a little bit better but than, it's local it? It's local, so yeah. it's local. So mm -hmm. for a, a small container like this, mm -hmm. it's five five US right. dollars. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because there's a lot that goes into the, the, the processing. Right. You know, um, are there different the sizes? Living. No, this is the only size. The only size. Can we yeah. look at it? Can it open? Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's not that much. Mm -hmm. It's about fifty-five. Okay, that's how many grams? It's about fifty-five. Okay. Is it labeled? Like do we have uh, the Protein or nutrient content or anything? Right, that, no, right now. Yes. Okay. Not for the cashews, right. I, do not, I do not. But um, when you look in a supermarket mm -hmm. or any kind of like, if you go and you get like something like this, mm -hmm. right. it's about the same thing. Okay. And right. what I explain to people is that the difference between getting a fresh cashew, what mm -hmm. I call fresh cashews, right. and that cashew in the tin that's been all the way around the right. world. Right. It's more nutritious, it's tastier, it's right, sweeter, right. the whole nine. What I let people know is that... The processing is kind of less, right? Huh? The processing is kind of less. They don't put any additives. You don't put any extra no, additives. No, I do in. not. Right. They, have to put, they have to put some preservatives in there, right. but it's not even that. What I explain to people is that, so any brand you're looking to get, mm -hmm. most of them, if, if they're not locally produced, mm -hmm. But remember I said the Vietnamese are really aggressive. Right. A lot of the Asians come to Africa, they purchase the raw cashew nut. Mm -hmm. So Abi, um, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, a lot of these countries are still exporting raw cashew nuts. Okay. They go to Asia, they process it in Asia. And then in Asia, they export the processed nut, okay. right? So when you say you go to the States on vacation or you have some study abroad or whatever, you see a can of planters, for example, mm -hmm. that chances are that can that you're getting 
left from West Africa, went to Asia, was processing Asia, okay. left Asia, went to America, they processed it in America, then you take it from America and you bring it back to West Africa. Okay. Right? The shelf life, yeah, exactly. not, good. not good. The carbon footprint, mm -hmm. not good. The history, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know where it's been, how it got there, yeah, all of these things. Of yeah. So now you have Asian companies coming to West Africa and opening up like Ulam, which is like right. the largest in the world, as they just opened up a factory in Ghana. Oh, okay. All right. But if we have protection from our government mm -hmm. to enable us, meaning Iberians, Ceremonians, Ivarians, to do this kind of work, if we have a little bit of protection, mm -hmm. we can now have some of that process money here. Right, and we right, can keep right. it here at home. Well, fortunately, when we have this uh, panel discussion, we have... Uh, we're hoping to have Agua, Ecoas, you know, um, all these people. Uh, I think it's some group from some agreement, a group, USA, China, oh. all these people hoping that they will be there okay. to see the kind of things you're doing and some other people are doing so that we can see how they can connect yeah. to get to where we want to go. But I mean, be before wonderful. we end, where, where do you, how far do you think, or where do you see yourself maybe five years from now with, with this? Oh, in five years from now. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of wild, though. It's it's not it's right around the corner. Yeah, exactly. It's right around the corner. But um, what I look to do mm -hmm. is to build a factory, mm -hmm. and in that factory, I'm looking to process cashew nuts and export processed cashew nuts out of Liberia, because once you process it, you're making eight sometimes nine times the amount right raw. exactly 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 it's 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 significant right and right. if you invest and if you scale you're just making that much more right um, well um, thank you story. Veda oh, wow. and we've been talking to Veda Ayale Nut Simpson and she's the CEO of Quideu Incorporated right and we're yes. going to talk about cashew nuts thank you very much thank you very oh. much